Pinches Lowriders. What's up, everybody? 12 noon. Don't forget to chime in in the live chat. My coffee cup. These are available online. The link's in the bio. This is a a uh, travel mug. There's water in here. I already drank my coffee this morning. Anyhow, I'd like to start off a um, couple things really quick. Today, I'm going to have Ruthie, um, Ruthie Sky um, call in so we can do a little phone interview. Um, I'm also, I just want to let you guys know that I finally put a price list because I get people asking me all the time how much to advertise or stuff like that. So if you hit the website and you go into contact me or, um, and just ask for more information, if you're looking to advertise, if you have a product, if you're, you know, rims, hydraulic shop, stuff like that. And you want to, um, basically, um, advertise on my YouTube or, you know, sponsor my YouTube channel and stuff like that certain videos. I have all that available. I have a price list, price packages and more. Um, I'm just trying to network and I'm trying to help you like anything else. I'm coming up on almost, you know, I'm going to be having a hundred thousand subscribers soon. And I use all social media basically. And I have packages available if you want to um, advertise with me. So hit me up once again, go to the website, contact me. Um, or just pinchaslowriders.com at gmail.com is the email address. So other than that, what's, you know, it's been a while since I've gone live. I'm in my kitchen um, right now, and I haven't really had a setup to do my lives. Um, but I'm going to try to do more. I try to figure out um, just when to do it. Today is I have the holiday off, President's Day. So I'm off today at work. So and then usually I'm pretty busy on the weekends or I have my kid and stuff like that. So uh, this be the first chance in a while that I've had the house to myself and pretty quiet because um, my girlfriend has her other kids and they're here usually for school, but they're um, at their their uh, dad's. So right now I have the place to myself. It's nice and quiet. So it's nice. So this is why I decided I'm, I got to do it live because I have that. So. For the most part, uh, I always like to say appreciate everybody for subscribing, um, for following me on social media and all the support. Um, also, one more thing, um, when I, I moved and when I moved, I just recently found a box of these shirts, the baseball tees in 3X. I have a whole box. So if anybody needs a baseball tee in 3X, also message me. You can hit me up through Instagram, Facebook. Um, anything like that uh, so as of most merch anything that's linked in uh, underneath here that's the teespring that's print to order and i also have another separate website uh that's linked in my um web uh, on the website on the store and that's a completely different store than the teespring and teespring you'll see the the items underneath this video if you click there's a way more items available for purchase and support and i appreciate it all up tim thank you what's up so in in a in about a, a minute here we're gonna have ruthie call in and uh and we can get this uh interview going see who's all available and online also real quick like i said these are available on the website so if you go to the website and go under shop you can order these. There's other designs, the coffee mugs. So check it out. I appreciate you guys' support. You know, it's all good. It just helps me. Like I said, at the end of the day, it helps pay the bills. Will keep me doing this stuff. So, um. Also, I'm thinking about doing a newsletter. So you guys chime in in the comments, and here's what we do right now. Oh, hello. 
You're going to have to turn your volume down on your YouTube. You're going to have to turn your volume down on your YouTube. Or turn it off. Huh? Just, the, just the volume off, yeah. She's watching. So is that the Desperado volume or the Desperado soundtrack? That's uh, the good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> How's it so, going? Hi, everybody. Thank you for logging in. Thank you for being interested. I'm excited to be on. Yeah, so Ruthie, so the, w- one thing I was going to ask you, are you still going to go by Ruthie Sky or are you just going by Ruthie? Now that no you're way. I again? have to go by Ruthie Sky. Okay. So that's like a brand. Branded. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with Ruthie, um, I was been familiar with, with Ruthie when she was modeling. Many years ago, even before I became a photographer, and around the time I was just going to car shows and I just had a little uh, point and click camera. And this is when I ran into and I first met, you know, I was a fan, you know, and, um, you know, at the time there was a lot of shows going on and I was taking a lot of pictures. because I was, I was sending a lot of pictures to my cousin that was locked up. That's the little bit about how I got started in this whole thing because I was just started doing a lot of shows like that. But. Um, so when, when exactly, how old were you when you started modeling? Wow. You're going to put my age on blast like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, you're not that I, old. <laughs> I started when I was like 24. Oh yeah. I started at 24 okay. after I had my last child, my third child. I have three kids for those of you who don't know. Yeah. You had three kids back then. Yeah. Right? I had three kids yeah. back then when I started. Yeah. And then. So how long did you model for around uh, that period of time? I don't know. I want to say like maybe three, four years. Okay. But that, that was before like social media was popular. So you really actually had to hustle yourself out there and show up and make a name for yourself, a face for yourself, and basically create your own business out of nothing. Because the majority of the girls that were out there, they were introduced through their boyfriends or their husbands. Mm. And I didn't have anyone that was involved in the lowrider community. So I started from the desk. I started from nothing. And yeah, that, yeah, that was just like the beginning part of uh, MySpace it, when he got right. down to that was social like the media. The top, top three, top five, top 10. Yeah, exactly. And the, um, so let me think here. So in, in your modeling career, in the beginning, how far how far did you travel? Outside, I, I don't of- know. I re- I remember traveling everywhere. That was my mission because I knew that if I wanted to be known, I was actually going to have to make sacrifices, which took time away from my kids and and travel um, to places so everyone got to know who I was. And back then, we didn't really have social media where people can find you through social media. So I ended up creating like these little, I printed out a bunch of like little flyers with my photos on them, mm-hmm. put my name, and that's when MySpace started becoming a little popular, started putting my MySpace link on there, just started like putting them inside cars, on the windows, wherever. I mean, I knew people would probably throw them away, but as long as they see my name and my face, then, you know, they knew of me. And I'm putting myself out there. So I was basically promoting myself. That was that was when I didn't know how the game worked because I came and when I came, I didn't know the do's and don'ts. I didn't know that you had a say and you don't have a say because there's a lot of models that get told that they have to do certain things in order to do in order to get into certain places. But I didn't know any of that. So I mean I had a conscience and I knew mm. what I was willing to do and not willing to do. So I kind of had to learn from the bottom and, and now where and now that I'm at where I'm at, I'm, I feel super comfortable sharing, sharing with the younger girls, like, Hey, like, this is what you should do. This is what's not needed. This is what you can do. You know, like I'm willing to help out. There's plenty of room for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and I've always said there's, every, there's different levels to the models and what they're comfortable with. And I think sometimes people mistake that, like, like some models only do pinups. Some models are don't mind being in lingerie or a bikini. And some models are going to be a little more classy, but very sexy. It's just everybody's at their own level. And if you respect that, it actually works out pretty well because it really doesn't matter. Right. Like, it, yeah, you shouldn't have to think like you have to model a certain way. And, and I've talked to a couple models and, and that's I say you don't have to model a certain way just because other models are doing it. It's your preference. And then your photog- photographer should respect that as well. You also have to understand who's in the game, though, too, because you have, like you said, pinup models. You have women who um, 
who just don't want to put themselves out there like that. And you're also competing against like, not that it's a competition, but you're also um, walking and modeling against women who have strips. So they're comfortable being naked in their own skin and not to throw shame or anything on them. Like that's part of the community. That's part of the culture that's needed. That's required, but just stay in your lane. You know, you don't have to go on another lane unless you feel comfortable at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that's it. What it comes down to. See, the Chicano Park, I'm not sure what's going on with that. I emailed, uh, hold on one second, someone asked me about that. It's supposed to be the the 25th of April, and I'm still trying to find out if it's going to be a virtual or they're actually going to have it because of the whole COVID thing. So if there's anything, you you just Google Chicano Park, and it'll take you to the uh, steering committee. And I just want to say what's up to everybody that's tuned in. Um, You guys hear us pretty good. Can I get a chime in? Make sure you guys are hearing us. Me and yeah, let them know what they're talking to too. They then give them a face with my voice. Well, I I wish I could. It's yeah, the I wish YouTube was more integrated. There's a couple other things I don't know how to do yet. Is, is put that, but the face is you know it's Ruthie Sky, yeah. And you guys seen some Bye. of the pictures, and you guys seen some of the video. The the one video I put up for the slideshow of our photo shoot. Um, and you know we're here today. We're just promoting. You know. So the catch is, is that um, I brought her on today because I'm trying to do something different. I need a good reason to set up my stuff, take everything out of my closet to to set up my lives. And and I also want to let you guys know that I'm we're going to be attending the Arizona Super Show. So we should be there, and, and Ruthie's going to come model, um, and she'll be out there. So I don't know how many people plan on doing the Arizona Super Show, but um, Ruthie will be out there. Um, and this is going to be, what, your first time going out there? Right, the first time going to Arizona. Okay, and um, so when you when you modeled before, um, you're published. You've been published. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been published by Lowrider, by Street Low, by most of your common, actually, all, a majority of your Lowrider magazine. Yeah, all of them, almost even Hot Rods. I started doing Hot Rods too, oh, and imports. Nice. I know. I'm well. I remember the um. You were in the the photo shoot with the, or I mean the in Lowrider magazine, and that was what one. I think that was one of your last layouts before you that weren't was, really modeling. Yeah. You kind of disappeared after that. That was my last shoot because when I started, I placed a um like a goal. I placed a cap goal, and I was like, okay, once I hit, because the only reason I started was to prove to my boyfriend at the time that you know, like getting in magazines is super easy. Anyone can do that because I was at that time really insecure with myself and I wanted to prove to him what I wanted to prove to him that what he's seen in the magazines he had in front of him. Mm. And so at that time I knew it was going to take a lot of time and sacrifice. So I told myself and my family that once I hit low rider, I was going to stop. And yeah. so once I hit low rider, I stopped being you know, a woman of my word. I had to. Oh, that's... But then I took some time off. I ended up taking some time off to take care of my kids. Um, I went to school and further my education, went to college. Mm. Uh, I competed in uh, bodybuilding competitions. Um, uh, I ended up working. So now I'm back. Now I'm ready to come back. Yeah. I'm willing to stay this time for sure. And in a sense, I felt like it kind of did me good too, because I didn't really play myself out. Mm. So that's kind of like the pro but the con is, is that now that I'm coming back, all of the girls that I modeled with are already like certified and like have gone, have gone further. And it's a little bit discouraging, but at the same time, it's like, I'm at my own pace and I'm not, I'm not about numbers. I'm not about followers. I'm more about like counting invoices and how much I how I can profit or how much my family can profit off of this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, like anything else, it, there's a goal and then, it also like it, it's I don't know. I mean, like I said, it works both ways. Even the photographers, we have a lot to benefit from the models and the model models benefit from, you know, the photographers and then some. And, and, and it is about being out there. And but it's good to see that you took time to do, you know, other things with your life that are important and then not just, right. you know, settling for less. And, and that's a that's something, you know, anybody should anybody in their life should have a standard of what they want to accomplish. And then I want to get a shout out to Gen Six Local. He just uh, hooked me up with a five dollar uh, super chat. Um, That's what's up. That's and, what's uh, up. 
Let's see. Who else? So you have somebody that said, how has modeling changed? Modeling really hasn't changed besides besides the females. I mean, you have different type of girls that come in, and it's like a wave of movement. So it really hasn't changed at all. And then also with the modeling, like I have mad respect for the girls that are out there putting, um, dressing up like as original cholas. Like I love that style and I love that look because that's also required in the magazine too. So it's like you have a little bit of everything. Yeah. Actually. Modeling, I would say modeling hasn't changed. Modeling is still the same. Well, it's still competitive. And, okay, so, well, it's not a competitive. That's, that's where people get it twisted is that you're not always going to be every guy's cup of tea. Like there's a lot of guys that hate on me. I get messages that tell me that I'm a washed that tell me that, um, I get a lot of like discouraging messages, but at the same time you have to understand, you have to have tough skin to be in this industry too. Cause I'm pretty sure you get a lot of like discouraging messages. We just got a thumbs down on the video. So there's always going to be like negative feedback and negative comment, negative comments. You just have to know why you're in it and why you're pursuing it and understand that you're not going to be for everyone. And that's okay. I mean, if they're with you, that's cool. If they're not, that's cool too. Yeah, exactly. How? A lot of times they complain because I do the interview and all they see is me. They want to see you and, and it doesn't, and see, the thing is, is that YouTube isn't like, um, what is the other one everybody using for school and stuff that the, all the video no, zoom. zoom they're not it's not zoom and if i were to do zoom it have to be pre-recorded and i like to do a little bit of i like to do it live the live feedback and then like i said later on when cove is done and i do more of my podcast there'll be a lot more pre-recorded um uh podcast with the video footage and being in person and i have the setup for all that but that's just later on right now i'm making do with what we can get you know get done and yeah, I mean, it, it, I always tell people all the time, it's like when you get, if you, especially my theory is that a lot of times if you're getting hate messages from men, it's men that actually can't control their own social media and their wife <laughs> is talking shit under their, uh. under their thing. Because most men, I don't, I mean, I don't understand sometimes how some men can just sit there and talk bad about females. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm an ass. Like if I have to defend someone, I'm like, dude. If you're going to talk bad about the model, let's post a picture of your old lady and your baby mama. You know, basically post yeah. me a picture of your baby mama. Yeah. And then yeah, and if she, she looks, looks like better than the model, day. if she looks better than the model, I'll let you talk shit. But it's a respect. No, if, if anything, if anything, you should be like, even if she does look better than the model, then let's shoot. I want to see how you can handle your wife um, in, in the shoes of a model well, or I in think, the shoes of a woman displaying themselves like that. Well, yeah, like I said, I just I just my theory is that honestly, I think it's just usually some over controlling uh, relationship. There's negative stuff involved and is uh, the the woman has access to the phone. So. And I, I just, that's my theory. I don't really see that many genuinely like males unless they have really bad mama issues uh, going all out. And why are you even on a model's page? Why are you even looking through it? If you have that opinion, you shouldn't even be Using up all those energy, all that energy to say something negative. I like what Jesus said too. Jesus is like, nowadays, anybody wants to be a model. I feel like with the way Instagram is, and the platform that the Kardashians have placed, anybody can be a model. But the problem with that is, is can you handle it? Do you have tough skin to handle it? Because mind you, it comes with sacrifices. It comes with criticisms. You have to put yourself out there, your personality, who you are, your your um, defects. Because when you see a girl nowadays, you see a lot of filters too. But when you meet them in person, it's a whole different thing. They have a different type of personality. They don't look like what they look like on their page. So at the end of the day, anyone can be a model. And whatever model you... Um, Whatever model uh, you want to follow that you feel um, carries yourself well or has the style or personality that you like, then support. Yeah. You know, all, all it takes is a like. Abs that's it. Absolutely. And that's, and that's something I explain to people all the time. Really what it comes down to, models that get farther have a, decent, only, a good personality. Only culeros give thumbs down. That's right. Only uh, culeros. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's it, it is it is one of those things. It's it's like you have to have a personality and and you have to be a people person because actually that's what a, a, and that's how you actually win over like say the women on the women's side, right? I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is the wives and the girlfriends. 
is 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 your personality wins them over and then they don't mind i mean some women they're not yeah, they're not to. intimidated by by models but at the same time no matter what they look like they're not intimidated by a model because they understand it's part of the culture but not all women can handle that and a lot of times it is one of those things to be open-minded about because it's just it's entertainment it's it's a hustle it's it's part of the culture i mean car culture in general well I would say though too, as as someone who's um who's putting themselves out there like that, I will highly recommend, and that's something that I would do. I mean, it's it's optional for females to do that, or the models to do that, or not. But because I was raised a little differently, mm. I knew that I had to approach the wives and let them know that I respect them and I respect what her and their husbands put together as far as the vehicle, and that I'm not that type of woman that's coming to like you know try to steal your man or anything like that it's just all about the community it's all about the culture we we're what's keeping it alive though too yeah exactly. we're entertainment if you can say it like that we're the entertainment too yeah it's i mean it's just a, it keeps, it's that honestly, little extra sex sells. Yeah, sex sells. Yeah, I mean, and and that's the truth. And you and but you know what is there? There's a saying says sex sells, but you can't sell sex. You know what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> it it's one of those things where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And and I have a like in my opinion, you know, where a lot of magazines st- took a lot of models out and they stopped using models. And this was probably one of the reasons why Lowrider magazine had a downfall. I mean, even Playboy did it, and they well they made it. Uh, like PG-13 rated. They didn't, they weren't fully nude in the magazine, but, but they were like able to go online and see the full nudes, but the magazine sales just, just dropped and they had to go back to having the nudes in the magazine. It was all, right. you can't change something you've been doing, but I know it's people trying to be politically correct and, a, and appease, you know, um, respect for women, but there is a respect for women because some women want to do that. And nobody's forcing them to do it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, if you want to model fully dressed, model fully dressed. If you're going to model lingerie, that's your, that's your prerogative. But it's, it's the point where we see, we expect, and a lot of guys don't understand this too. They do expect some of these girls all to do act a fool and twerk and all this other shit at the show. So they have no concept to like treat people as they are, not as what you think they they present themselves. Yeah. I like, I like that. Who was it? His sister asked, what is the lifespan of a model? Understand that a model still has a job. Understand that a model is still a wife at the end of the day. Understand that a model is still a mom at the other, at the end of the day, a daughter, a sister. We still have normal ass jobs. We read, we eat, we shit, we do everything that everybody else does. We're just putting ourselves out there and we're taking care of ourselves. Like it's kind of like the guys that bring the vehicles and they make sure that they pay the price for the details of the vehicle. Some Mm -hmm. models, they pay for gym membership. They pay for rather it's liposuction implants, whatever it is that they're paying for their, their, their body is the vehicle. And that's what they're displaying out when they go into the show. So they have something to offer too. It's like not all guys have low riders. So if you have one, appreciate what you have. And it's the same thing for the models. Not all models can be a model. And the ones that are modeling is because they, They've put the sacrifice, they've put the money on themselves, they invested in themselves, they believe in themselves. And for females to have like a very classy look, they're not going to carry the same look as another woman who wants to walk around in a thong. Not that they're throwing shame, but that's her lane. If that's the style, if that's the model, if that's what you're looking for in a model, then you follow that. But if you want something that is mysterious, classy traditional elegant you know then you pick you pick your girls you don't have to follow everyone just like you don't have to follow all of these lowrider sites that we have like ancient lowriders focuses more on the culture of the live active movement uh it's lowrider it's lowriders photography focuses more on like um like what's going on at the moment i mean you have all these different like lowrider centerfolds they're just like a Playboy version of lowriders, and then you have lowriders where it's just focusing on the actual cars. Like you pick and choose what you want. It's like not everybody's gonna order the same pizza, the same food at a restaurant. It gives you options, and options are good, right? Like nobody buys the same bread or the same bags of chips. Exactly, and and that's and that's one of the things where I tell people too in videos. Whenever I have someone hating or talking, like they don't like the way I film in a cruising in music that like, you don't uh, include music yeah th- th- well there's a purpose first of all so i can make right money. but the other thing is a lot of it is is um what am i trying to 
what am I trying to convey by the videos I make? Well, I want you to not, I want things to kind of go fast so that you regret not being there. So if you're from that area or you were thinking about going to that car show, you should like, honestly, like this is how I even know how to start traveling to certain shows. I go look on YouTube for the video of the shows and see the type of cars and the coverage. And, and I'm, and I am critiquing the video. Like oh, I could have done way better than that. Or I'm like, damn, that's some really nice cars. And it looks like there's a lot of people. So maybe that's an area or a show that I want to hit next year. I'm going to travel. I'm going to pay for the plane ticket, the hotel and the rental car to go to this show to do what I do because it looks exciting or it looks like there's, you know, happening there. And and that's what it's also the models bring to that too. Like what yeah. models go to certain shows. Um, really it's like for me, I don't do this as like, I don't do this as a career or because I want, I mean, if income comes, then I'll receive it. If income doesn't, then it's cool too. But for me, this is my passion. This is what I do. If I'm blessed, uh, if I'm blessed in a way to where I can um, put myself on display like that, then I will, because this is what I like to do. It's my passion. So it's something I do from the heart. I think Jesus asked if, um, are Latinas the best low rider models? And I would say no, because you have, different lowrider owners you have african americans you have hispanics you have you have you have asians you have chinaman like majestic so no like to each their own we want all different types of labor and we don't want to keep the lowrider community just in the hispanic culture because we want people to understand that it's a community and we welcome everybody and we have something to offer yeah that's the one I'm thing no the one thing about the lowrider community is it's very open, diverse, and we actually encourage that. So I've seen, you know, well, I don't want to really want to get into it in this one, but I've seen where people are asked, like, what do people think about this race or that race? I'm sorry, but in the lowrider community, we really don't care about your race. We care about, like, your car. Like, it, it bring the car but, to the table and But, but we can and be honest and say that most, most Latinas are what most guys want to see. Yeah, most of the time. I mean, especially in the culture, because that's what we're expecting. You know what right. I mean? So I think. Um, but, but we welcome everybody. Yeah, exactly. So real quick, the one question from uh, John Sharp. I think it's Sharp. Uh, he asked, he's from the UK and he's asking, how do we put the cruises together? Well, the reality is, is that since it's COVID over here and we're all on lockdown, that you're allowed to do. I mean, if you're stay, supposedly supposed to stay in your car, but basically they're doing these cruises they're picking certain nights and they and they do it ahead of time and the weather's great and it's a great turnout and people go most people some people will get out the cars most people stay in their cars um i mean it just depends but the it and also also the community you gotta also understand it also falls into the cities of course san jose la sacramento certain communities have a, a little bit of a bigger car culture so really when it comes down to it, it's the car culture because as some some of the cruises you see different types of cars as well not just lowriders because they're trying yeah. to get out the house too and enjoy the cruises you see dubs you see um you see uh hot rods you see imports and you know i say like even at the car shows we welcome all but also be respectful too like don't be don't be having burnouts at the lowrider shows like you can have your own little burnout show in the corner but not around the lowrider community. It's a it's a it's a different lifestyle than the yeah. than the imports. But I like watching it. Like invite me to the burnouts. <laughs> yeah. No, Todd Baker. He says he thought California did lo uh, ended the lockdown. Well, they ended the. They still have the six feet. There's no. There's still we're on tiers. It's not. There's no curfew. Uh, we're wearing masks. Curfew, you know, but we still have to wear yeah. masks and all that stuff like that. It's not that they ended anything in the car culture. Because you, you're in your car, anywhere in any state is still having cruises. Actually, you're this, cruising. This lockdown in is a actually luxury created, vehicle. Yeah, but it's actually created a giant. Um, basically, we went back to cruising like in the 90s was, was the last time there was like really cruising. But basically, you brought back car culture and the cruising culture that people grew up in before social media that that's what everything is really going on more than anything because of this whole COVID. There's no big car, not that many big car shows anymore. And because of that, you have this giant car culture of, of cruising. So all these cruise nights mm -hmm. is because people are trying to get out of the house. 
But even when like all of these car club or all the all of these car clubs that are out there cruising United and together like that, you have spectators pulling out their cameras because it's like they've never seen something like this before. They were never introduced to like this side of the world. So it's it's a good thing too that COVID is happening because now you have outside spectators actually appreciating the culture, uh, the vehicles, and they're like they're like excited to see the hoppers too. They're like, whoa, like you could do something like that to a vehicle. Yeah, this is what we could do to vehicles. Yeah, exactly. And and that and and I like to explain people to that that they're like, what is the point of hopping? And it comes down to uh, engineering. And is is if if you don't really mm-hmm. understand like why do they do that? A lot of people don't understand that it was an accident kind of a thing. All they built was they wanted the car to go up and down because they liked it to be low and they wanted to be able to get into like certain parking lots that had speed bumps and stuff like that. The whole bouncing thing became like an accidental thing. Somebody just like hit their switch one day and the car came off the ground and then they started from uh, a couple inches to a, a, a yard stick and then it got you know way crazy and, and it just evolved. And, and you got to remember NASCAR was the same way. It was, uh, you know, uh, bootleggers and then they got in they hyped, they fixed up these cars and then they started racing them so and uh, and most people that do these big hoppers they really have like a shop they don't do hoppers on everybody's car but they're there to say oh my my, my car is the best hopper i do the best engineering install and everything else like that you want a regular setup to make your car just go up and down and stuff like that you know come to my shop and that's really what it comes down to it's being able to show off your work and then people go to that shop to get their hydraulic system done, airbag system done, suspension, or or even more. But they usually it's a representative of somebody's um, engineering talents. So Jason Rogers says, "I wish that the lowrider culture was a lot bigger in the Charlotte, North Carolina. You got to organize it. Get get a hold of all the rest of the lowrider um, owners out there and start doing a little show, even if it's just three vehicles." Do it once a month, like cruise around your your known like uh, known streets, like Broadways or or main streets that you guys have, and start cruising, start organizing it. Then you'll have other people want to start building their own, and that's how you form your own community. But you got to stay uh, committed, got to stay committed and dedicated. Just like Beaches Low Riders didn't start out of nothing, you had you stayed committed, you stayed dedicated, and it formed into something at the end. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm sure, like with anything that you decide to build from the bottom up, there's always going to be doubt. There's always going to be fear, sleepless nights where you feel like you're not doing enough, where you feel like you could be being better. So it's like you just got to stay encouraged. You got to stay motivated. You got to hype yourself up. You got to be your biggest fan. Yeah, exactly. And and the one thing is, is that I'm going to say it's consistency. But the, the biggest mistake is trying to cruise every weekend and thinking everybody's going to show up every weekend. Right. You might get like the first one you throw may have like the, like some of the best turnout. I would say for a good cruise in your community to do it once a month. And the reason why is because people pretty much locked down, like, you know, the, the second Saturday or something like that of the, of whatever, what this will be, give people plans. They'll also be having options to do other things. The problem is, is if people try to cruise in the same area, the same every weekend, people are going to not show up. People are going to get tired of it. They're going to have other things to do. It's going to get and played out real to, quick. And you got to be like a model. You got to be willing to travel outside of the city too. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's You got to make your car club known. Yeah, you got to go out, go out of town, go to other people's cruises and then tell them about your cruise. So then they come out of town and go re- and go support your cruise. Right. It's a network right. of, of everything because like Ruthie, you're in Sacramento. So it's like people go to Sacramento from all over Modesto, Stockton, San Jose mm-hmm. for certain events. And then vice versa. And the next week, everybody's in Stockton or, or people are in San Jose. And, and and that's a two hour like San Jose to, to Sacramento is a two hour drive understand people are traveling that to, to to go cruising to support these different communities and lowriders so they want to see different things they want to cruise different streets they want to get out of the house but they're going to get tired if the cruise is local every weekend i'm trying to tell guys same, this. and they see the same vehicles every day the same people over and over that's why you don't want to see the same model every day you want to see a different model that's it you, you got to switch it up you got to you got to, I guess, cater to everyone's desire and needs. And, and, and the same goes with di- going to different shows. Like when you go to different car shows in different states and different areas, like some people have told me like, oh, I don't think, 
you know, that show is going to be big enough for you. I don't, it's not about that. It's about, I want to know, is this the show that happens every year that everybody looks forward to? Let me know. And I want to go check that out. I want to see what right. it's about. And because Plus, you're, bas- you're basically the eyes and ears of most people who aren't able to travel. And you're able to show them what other vehicles other people have put together so that they, so that people locally can come up with their own ideas. Like, I like what this car club did out there. And I like how they had these colors or these styles. And it's like, you're, you're bringing, you're bringing feedback to the people in the internet world. So they know, like, dude, like Japan right now is off the hook. Like, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but Japan is like, they love our style. They dress like, like the Hispanic culture. They're hopping vehicles out there. They're starting something from nothing in Japan. Like that is like, I applaud them for that. Like that's cool. Well, uh, yeah. Well, if, if Japan is able to do it, any other city could do it. Well, de- it also depends because, well, Japan's been doing it for a lot of years. And I know in the nineties, they, I had, I seen people selling their cars left and right to people in Japan it, their culture, they built it up. And the thing is, is they also have different laws. They don't have like racial stereotypes that like held them back in the 90s and 80s. They don't have none of that. See, that that's the whole thing. They're just a car culture kind of a place. So when they're, they build their car culture and to represent, see, they modeled it off of Los Angeles. That's why, you, that's where you get the, 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 the look of a, the Cholos and the Cholas and stuff. And they're buying these heavy hitter cars that are like they haven't even like touched them but they bought these like seriously famous or popular cars that were back in the 80s and 90s they've kept them up the way they are and yeah. their their movement has nothing in you know they don't have I, I i've talked to a little bit of people from over there through you know um like google when you could translate and stuff and a lot of times they just say you just really can't hop like that's it. You're not supposed to hop in the street. But other than that, the, the cops don't bother them for the most part from what I'm getting. So I have a question. When is Pinches Lowriders going to Japan? Eh, well, when, first of all, after we do all this COVID <laughs> stuff, but I'm figuring maybe in a couple of years, I'll, I'm, I'll make the effort to go out there. There you go. That's but on the goal, the bucket list. Huh? That, that is one of my lists. There's Japan, there's Germany. I know even Australia has a great um, uh, lowrider culture out there. Uh, people don't even know it, but uh, there is, and there's there's a lot of the uh, car clubs that we uh, uh, associate with out here. But there's like I know there's a Vehitos chapter in Australia. There's um, you know Majestics chapter in Germany. There's you know all this stuff, and then all the of course all the clubs that have in Japan. So, so yeah, it's it's just one of those things. I you know, for me, it's. Like, like when we go back to like you modeling and stuff now, like I said in the beginning of this video, if, if people weren't here, I used to be a fan. Like I wasn't even a photographer then when you were modeling and I was just going to shows and stuff like that. And so once again, we did the photo shoot that we did a couple of weeks ago and everybody's probably seen the pictures and the video and everything else. Um, where, where are you right now with, with your modeling like what are your your right now your goals some things maybe you didn't you didn't get done when um you were modeling before i think the only thing i didn't get done when i was modeling before is to see how far i could go because i felt like once i did a little writer a lot of um amazing opportunities came that i would have taken but because i'm a woman of my word i had to turn them down so this time around i want to take it even further i don't want to just model but i want to do acting i want to do i even down the scene because when i took time off i went to music school too there's there's a lot of stuff that i did to invest in myself mentally physically and emotionally and spiritually so i definitely want to see how far i could go and it's not so much that i'm chasing paper or i'm chasing fame or i'm chasing um chasing like material materialism like i'm the least materialistic person you'll probably meet but it's just that's just who i am i'm a humble person i'm a kind person i'm a loving person and i think that's why i had someone like like rick you know like follow me or or even want to talk to me because i'm very approachable um i'm super humble i never see myself any higher than anybody even now like i'm just this is just who i am i i love um I love making people feel good. If if I'm able to talk to people, I will. So if you see me at the AZ show or any show, you know, feel free to approach me and talk to me if you'd like, if I'm not busy. But other than that, yeah. 
I would just say that if I'm with my family, like if I have my kids, just, you know, like respect my space a little bit. Just because if I have them with me, it's because that's the quality time that I decided to take um, to some of my kids. Yeah, exactly. Ruthie, who are some of the top low rider models peers? I don't know. It, it, it depends on how you define them. Are you defining them top based on their follower base? You know, based on how many followers they have? You know, I feel like a top model is a person who's just in, involved in the community, um, who is putting themselves out there to, I don't know, like I can't really say who's a top model because a lot of the top models that I grew around with, one I highly respect is Chole. Like I love Chole. Chole, I, I'm still a super number one fan of Chole. And I'm I'm trying to get her to come back out. Like I've always had so much respect for her and what that see, that's a top model to me. She's put in a lot of years, a lot of footwork, yeah. um, hitting hella mm-hmm. shows, going hella places. Like that's committed. That's a committed person. So yeah. in, in my eyes, I would say Chole. Yeah. What about you, Rick? Me? Is a top model. Oh, that's hard to say. I do a lot of work with uh Candy and Chrome. And the reason why I really work with her a lot, even though now she's stuck in Canada, she can't travel. Just FYI, she can't because they have borders closed over there. But she has her own business. She works um, and she models and she models for the fun of it. I mean, more more yeah. than anything. And then. Um, but she has a solid business and she's a straight like. And oh, yeah, she's a car part distributor. So she actually I've literally seen her talking while we were at a shoot to a couple guys about the car stuff and the products that she has and they're just like jaw drop because they're looking at oh it's a model no she's her actual full-time job is working with automotive parts and one of the biggest uh car part distributors in canada so (laughs) so when when uh people talk to her they they right away realize that she's not just a model and when she you know and so the business business savvy is is really where like for me i think some of the models i work with the most all have that mentality and yeah. you know everybody's got goals and, and and stuff like that and that's why like i'm like you know glad that we're able to touch base and and, and start shooting and stuff like that because i know you're in the same mentality of just you know you're you're actually interested in doing it with effort and i i'm i i have a passion for cars like for most people who don't know my father owns like an auto body uh, mechanic shop and he's owned it since i was a baby like he came straight from mexico um at the age of 13 started the business once he started the business he made enough money to bring half of his family down here so a majority of the time i was at my dad's shop around mm-hmm. vehicles different styles of vehicles um, watching him repair so I'm a mechanic's daughter and and to me I really truly appreciate vehicles it's not something I just stand by a vehicle because I think it's pretty no like I understand the hard work that goes into it the money that goes into it so for me to hear a, a man that owns a vehicle that says my low rider isn't where I want it to be at I always remind them that they still have something that most men don't have even if it's just um, pri- a primer to lowrider, you know, at least you have a lowrider. Yeah. You know, maybe it's not at where you want it to be at, but at least you own a vehicle. Most men don't even have vehicles. Yeah, exactly. They're spectators. Yeah, and they wish they even had a vehicle, like me. Oh. The um, oh, what was I going to ask you? The um, oh, somebody asked if you knew Ra- Ra- Raquel. Uh, Raquel McDonald. is that Raquel Mack? No, is no, not Raquel Mac. Mac? No, that's not oh. Mac. That's Maldonado. She modeled around the same time as Daza. No, I haven't heard of her. Oh, Never. Daza. I appreciate Daza, though, too. I have high, high so, respect for her. She's so, still the queen. Yeah, so that's what I was going to bring up. So if you go, I have an interview with Daza. It's on here on my page if you look up my lives. And there, she says um, when she was discovered for Lowrider, she has a song. She had recorded a song. She was, before she modeled, she was a singer. And um, for Lowrider Magazine, that's how she started what? and got involved. Yeah, she recorded one song. So, and kind of like. It's on um, YouTube or, as well, too. 
so kind of like Davina, because huh? I remember Davina when she started going to the shows too, and she just like when I left, uh, she was we were like uh, all hitting shows together, and then when I came back, like everybody blew up. I was like, whoa, like an explosion. Well, I mean that's the thing, and and, and, and I think um, a lot of it comes down to everybody went their different ways, and then and. I think a lot of times what we don't realize, like we have our commitments and then now it's time, like we're at a point where we're going to take chances and make those uh, choices, the, the mm -hmm. choices and the sacrifices to get to do stuff that we want. And, and I think a lot of people don't understand that because I think when you're young, I've always told a lot of, um, I told a lot of people that they have opportunity to really get farther if they've, take certain things seriously because I made those mistakes, right. and, you know, get into the whole thing. But I mean, I made the mistakes of just thinking, yeah, yeah, whatever. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older that um, now I had to sit there and deal with my mistakes to get, you know, a good job and such and so on and so forth. So sometimes it's, it's good to follow your dream and put that in, in, in perspective. Like, is it that important or is it, is it, are you going to sacrifice for something that, you, you know, Maybe someone else just doesn't want you to do because they don't believe in you. But and then right. and you're making that choice because you think it's the right choice. But then later on in life, you realize you sacrificed for somebody else's opinion of you. And, and we don't realize that. I mean, so it, it's just one of those things. And I see this with a lot of different models. Um, really, I always joke, but like I know people where, you know, the photo shoot takes so long to come out and then they want. And then by that time, the model's like basically retired, doesn't model, doesn't want to be associated with modeling, you know, and, and they moved on in life. And, or they become Christian. Yeah, uh, that's what I was telling you. <laughs> that was that joke I was telling you. They become Christian, married, have kids, they don't want to be involved. Like, and, 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 that, and then it's like, but you, that's why you have to, you have to be on it in the moment. And, modeling and is very time also, sensitive. It's very time yeah. sensitive. And you also have to respect that there's going to be a lot of politics and you're just better off not involving yourself and just staying in your own lane. Like you see a lot, you see, you see a lot behind the scenes and, and you, you see a lot behind the scenes at your job. You see a lot behind the scenes in your family. You see a lot behind the scenes everywhere. You just have to mind your business and keep pushing forward. That's, that's how I see things. Just mind your business and keep going forward. And that, and that's exactly it. That's why the comp, the competition, when people say competition between other models or other models, I mean, at first, sometimes you come back in your solo and then you get involved or you meet certain other models in, in, in your network. And I've seen it. And then, you know, I see other models start off as as like a pair. Or they're always together and then they go separate ways because of something. And so there's, there's all there's that. So there's, there's all that stuff. There's drama. There's people pumping you up. You're better than this person. You're better than that one. It's why music groups break up you know you're the better singer you should be the main guy blah 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 and it's all somebody trying to pump you up because they got something that they're you know they're trying they have another attention in uh, intention yeah and, and it's and most guys best. like most guys want to see some type of show so they're going to say something negative about another model saying something negative about you but for me it's like it's I'm cool with everybody. I don't care about gossip. I don't care about what hearsay or what people say. Like for me, there's this motto that I was taught as a kid, as long as your Cortez is not in front of my Cortez is, I'm cool with everybody. And I wish the best for everybody. Like I want the best for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Somebody posted, somebody posted something about um, our lowrider models, ring card girls. It depends if, if the, it's a promoter wants to hire them. So that's how majority of the models get opportunities is because whatever photos that you have, your best mm. quality photos you want to put on your page, on your Instagram page, because it's basically a business card. It's a profile card. And if the promoters for UFC or whatever fight um, are interested in your, your type, your body, your personality, then they hire you. And that's how they, they get another source of income. Exactly. I mean, once again, it's, it's, being a model for cars doesn't always translate into something else, but then at the same time, it's also how it gets you out there. And then people, it, it's a network. And, and I have people, I have women that will message me and say, look, this person said they want me to go model and they want me to go to these events and they're going to, you know, 
what should I charge them or should, you know, this and that. And then it ends up being nothing because a lot of times there's guys that go, Oh, I have this stuff going on. I'm going to pay you. And, and, and really they don't want to pay you. They just want to get you there. It wasn't serious. They're not serious. So, they're just trying to, they're ever, trying to think they're trying to woo you. And so go ahead. I don't own a low rider, Mr. Low rider three. Do you want to donate one to me? Uh-huh. Um, so have you ever had any girls show you like, send you like picture messages, like, like, consider me kind of thing like do you ever get like those awkward photos in your dm oh yes i do but uh, uh <laughs> i only say that I'm because sorry, as a female no. i get a lot of awkward <laughs> photos too well i mean it, it, at the end of the day um there's, like there's uh, it, well <laughs> well no here's the deal here's the deal this is this is the this is the honest truth there's a lot of photographers out there that love photoshop they'll take pictures of any female that's willing to dress in the worst possible combination of lingerie or skimpy ass clothing and they'll photoshop the crap out of them so that they look like they're something they're not then invite the same model to a car show now who looks ridiculous when they show up and they're been photoshopped left and right and they get to a car show and you can't photoshop that when you're in public the model, the girl, the female, the, the photographer is absolutely taking advantage of you. He's making you look like something you're not. You go and you he shouldn't even have qualified you to do all that. But because you are willing to do it and he took advantage of the that that he put your pictures out there, you think oh, all these people like and they love me. But, you know, damn well, that's not really who you are. And then when you get out there, all you get is people being negative. And it's not the same. And it's not, they don't respect you. And they're like, well, what happened to your picture? You don't look like your picture. That's you? How is that you? And you got to look people in the eye and go like, oh, that's me. But they Photoshop like 25, 30 pounds off of you. It's not cool. It's not cool. And it's the photographer taking advantage of these girls in, at, and and then th- making them believe that they can go out in public and dress a certain way that does not it does not make them look good. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. that. That has a lot to do with the photographer and how they respect you as a human being, as a person to think I'm not going to make you look bad. And that's my goal. I'm not trying to make you look bad because I'm not trying to make me look bad. That's true. I, I guess for me, like, I don't mind if my work is photoshopped or not just because I know that I'm confident enough to walk outside of the filter and in the filter. But I like filters though too. You know, like I like dabbling with filters. I like reminding people what it looks like when I use a filter. But Ruthie, you don't need Photoshop. That's the whole thing. That's what my my point is, is that I'm saying that there's a lot of models out there and a lot of the guys, these have these, these, these girls, they'll just bring because they have a pretty face, but they're like, it's not, it's not right because at the end of the day, it's not even about a filter a filter. Isn't it's not what they like look like as beauty wise in their face. And it's not about body shaming. It's about being realistic to what you're mm. trying. This is why a lot of these guys question what, why is there no models or this is not a model or this is this because they're just bringing out a female that's willing to wear like half naked, but she's not, you know, she doesn't have any taking care of her body. She's not taking care of herself. She doesn't look like what they photoshopped her into. There's a difference between using Photoshop yeah. to hide little blemishes or, you know, a scar or something else. But the difference is, is, is you shoot, I shoot. So I, I don't need to use Photoshop and I don't well, then, pump the, these females I, up that don't deserve to be. That. Then I would say both model and photographer just need to do their part. Look, so as a model, I mean, if, if, if stuff was cropped out, then, you know, like, ponte a caminar, you know, like, go walking or take care of yourself. No te descuidas or don't, you know, don't let yourself go kind of thing. Cause well, I mean, that's... Like, like, we, like we mentioned earlier, there's sacrifices on your end that you need to make, too. Yeah, but it, it, it like I said, it's it's more of of some people just taking pictures and then using Photoshop to correct everything and you when somebody has they don't have they shouldn't even be considered a model they should just be like hey i'm no i'm i'm sorry 
or a pass or whatever. I don't, I, nice. I, I get, I get, no, but I've, I honestly, to be honest with you, I've had women that are trying to model and I just ignore them because I don't have nothing. I can't say anything to them. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. What do you want to model? Like, because you, so is there a, a you don't understand the behind, that? behind the scenes, there's certain, yeah. there's certain photographers that will take somebody that has no business, no business modeling. They'll Photoshop their whole stomach off of them and then put the pictures out there. And then all the guys are like, oh, my God, she's fucking great. But you see her in person and they're like, what the hell? I've heard this behind the scenes. What the hell is that? You don't understand. Behind the scenes is like, what in the hell was she doing she wearing so that? Like Disgusting. It, no, it's, 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 it's just no one thinking out the big picture, how it makes you look as a person as a, as a photographer as a the girl like what when she all what happens when people start just ridiculing the hell out of her when they go back to the page and say i seen her at the car show she looked nothing like this she was like 50 pounds or 60 pounds more like what the, do you think that does to a person that's just straight out like you're only hurting somebody more by doing that and people don't understand the photographer and it's the photographer. It's not the girl. It's the photographer that's playing on this girl's, you know, insecurities or um, think he's getting something out of it. And a lot of people oh. don't get that. Like you really just don't understand. Like there is certain women that have, they're not, they can't be going out as being a model because they just don't have any kind of physique body. <clears throat> and I get that. I've gotten people. Oh, so and so took pictures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going, oh hell no. So what is being shit? What or have you like taken a survey of what most men want to see? Like you guys want to see tall um, girls, um, short girls, Hispanic girls. It has girls, nothing to do with that. It, 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 big see, booty girls, it has big nothing, It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. We, Someone said women, natural beauty is best. Natural beauty is best. But my point being is, is that you can't go Photoshop somebody completely. And this is where, like I said, if you're if your photographer does that to you, he's taking advantage. And you have to be in public if you're really like a real honest God model should look om exact, almost pretty much exactly the same as in public and in a picture. When I, I see I you in the in. But uh, that, I mean, photogenic if you were to wise. See me, if you were to see me locally, if you reside in the city of Sacramento and you see me locally, you're not going to see me in no booty shorts or no like tight leggings. You're going to see me in some big old sweats, 3XL sweaters, but it has probably nothing no to, makeup but it has and my hair to, in a bun. But it has they nothing to do with the dress. They may not even recognize me either. But it has nothing to do with the way you dress. What I'm saying is, is I can show you I mean, this is where people, like I said, this is where I think people want to understand the difference between a model and a regular person off the street. And when you're asking, like, when I get pictures, I've gotten women say, oh, I want a model. And then I look at, who, there's no, there's no way. There's just no okay, way they can pull off a mo model. No. And I, and I, and, and, and the <laughs> thing is, is that it's, you got to understand, it's not being mean, but it's being realistic. And it's being, um, you know, for myself, having at least having the ability to say no. I'm not going to say yes just because the girl wants to. Oh, I want to be a model for you. Do no, you? Are I you I, I'm not them? taking advantage. I'm not taking advantage you, of them. Are you honest with them and tell them that you don't have the potential, or maybe no, you I just should ignore. reconsider? Or I just ignore. You just, I just ignore. No, just you don't have anything nice to say. You don't say it, anything at all. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Because you know what? Like I said, they'll go to someone else and the guy will be like, yeah, you're a model. You're going to take pictures for me because I don't know how to, I don't know how to obtain models. I don't know how to network with models. And so they'll take pictures and I'm sitting there going, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I would be embarrassed. I would be embarrassed to put my name on some of these pictures that I see. And, would, and, and that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that it's not about body shaming. It's not about anything like that. It's, it's really about just people that don't understand what 
this makes sense and this doesn't make sense. And just you, because somebody said they want a model, it's like me saying I want a model. That is horrible. If I want. Have you, have you ever had a car owner say like when you brought a female in or a model in and I've seen it, tell you, like, I've seen, I've seen, it. I've seen, I'd rather you to shoot my car by itself. That's right. I have. Good for you guys. I have. <laughs> Have I absolutely standards. have. I absolutely sit there and I've been to a shoot with somebody. And it was when I, you know, work with somebody, other people and I wasn't the photographer. And the guy goes, nope, 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 nope. Because once again, the example is photoshopped and real life. And they see this girl in real life and they go, nope, I don't want her on my car understand that there is a consequence behind it and the, the the thing is is that's what i'm saying there's manipulative people that lie to get what they want but they have no concept of what people want to see i know that people want to see all types of women and i know that and there's nothing wrong with that but you have to get realistic on how you do the pictures and how you work with people it, it, you can't be driving a fantasy when it's not even realistic and you're only going to make people you're, you're hurting people's feelings by bringing them into this when they shouldn't be. And I think that that's the whole thing where, where everybody has a part. I, I had a friend, matter of fact, that wanted a model and I said, you're better off being a personality. You are beautiful, but you're not a model, but you could be a great personality in the community. And, um, she could you know, be a host. Yeah, there's other opportunities. But, but, the, but that's that's the thing. Being a personality, that's exactly that. You can be a personality, be known, but you but you're not going to be a model. And people they see they see you and they tell you they want. Them. But I'm telling you right now, what people a lot of these guys oh come model on my car. They're just trying to get you to their car. They're trying to get you close to them they don't even have a photographer they don't have nothing they just like oh you're pretty come model on my car come model on my car come model on my car but don't so, understand um, that they're just trying to hustle you because they're trying so to get something at you i would do so something i would do as a model back then um and i'm even thinking about still continuing it is like i would charge guys like that who just wanted me to take a picture of um of of a photo with them and their vehicle is like, you got to respect the fact that if you want the model to come in your vehicle, then she's also going to charge you too, because you're making her work for something that you want. You know, it's not something that she needs to do, but you want her to model with you. And my rates were super low. I think back then I was only charging like a buck and most guys are like, you're going to charge me a dollar to take a picture with you. And I'm like, Look, yeah, how did you just a dollar. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's the thing before you used to tip the models to take pictures with them. And now everybody's cheap. Like, I, like protein, I had a budget for doing protein that. Protein ain't cheap. Protein ain't cheap. Gym membership ain't cheap. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's the thing. And then gas and, wasn't cheap either. Hold on, I want to go. So this guy Roger, he says, I didn't know. What, I have photography experience. Here, the thing is, is that I'm a published photographer. I've been published. Um, I also do video, and I'm also, and I've also do wedding photography and such like that. The the thing is, is that I do my YouTube. And I do the YouTube for the visuals um, that has nothing to do with. I don't sit there and actually like take if you want to see higher end quality of videos, they're like two minutes long. You want to know why? Takes too damn long. OK, I'm a run gun guy, but I can also sit there and do straight up portraits. I can do anything else. I can do anything. I have several cameras. I've invested thousands of dollars in my equipment. And so. What I do on my YouTube videos is not does not translate at all to what I do in wedding videos, quinceanera videos, none of that. It's all done differently, professionally, and I have diff different equipment to do deal with those things. So that's just just FYI. I'm not I'm not just screwing around on YouTube, and I do know what I'm talking about. Um, I actually had a YouTube before it was even owned by Google. I have to say that over and over. But so when are you interviewing Gaza? I want to tune in for that. I already I did. Questions. See, that's what? it's I did it. Okay, I did I it in the beginning of COVID. So in the beginning, okay. when COVID when COVID started, everything went to shit. And I canceled all my flights, all my all my travel. And YouTube took a major hit. And when it did, 
I had to figure out something else. So I started interviewing some of the models, but not like anything else. Not everybody wants to be heard. No one, people don't want to hear themselves talk. You know, it is like some video, some, some models are scared of being on video. They have a fear of it. And this is why sometimes you don't see videos with models or, or, or um, certain things That's because, because everybody is, criticized. well, it's not, it's not even that it's, it's, it's just a fear of public speaking and, and you know, the video is going to be up and, and they don't know what to say. It's, it's, it's all about your level of consciousness and confidence and all that stuff like that. And that's why I always try to tell people that like, you got to reach people where they're at. Like that's the realistic. They're like, well, why does this person doesn't want to have an interview? Interview so and so. Well, I'll interview someone. I I asked. They said no. I mean, it's it is what it is. So. Yeah, that's true. Not everybody has the personality, or they feel comfortable because, like, I feel I feel like most females feel like they're going to be criticized, and and they probably will because there's guys out there who are like, oh, she was like, she kind of like didn't really have anything interesting to say or well, yeah, I didn't because, like her but, voice. She sounded like a man or something. <laughs> well, I think I I'm think, telling you, I've heard you it can't, all. yeah, you can't please any, you can't please everybody. And, and, and that's the whole thing. The get down when it comes down to it is we do the best we can. People that like it are going to like you. And people that don't, don't people won't like you because you're not going to walk around in a bikini. So what, but there's other people that don't respect you because you don't walk around in a bikini. That's okay. Right. That's okay. I have lots of guys on Facebook that um, message me or comment me and say, we want to see you in a song. And it's like, okay, but that's not my style. Like Google that Google a big booty girl with a song. Like that's not who I am. I mean, people have to keep in mind that at the end of the day, I'm a mom. I'm a daughter. My dad follows me on Facebook. Yeah. Like there's just certain things that I still want to respect, you know, tradition, culture, you know, morals, you know, it's like maybe when my dad passes away, that's something I'll look into. And actually I do have like a private collection of photos that I feel like might be beneficial later, but not now. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and that's, and, and that's exactly that. It's, it's your standard of how you want people to see you. And that's what it comes down to. Right. That's what I think I found when I work with certain models. Is, and that was my kind of my point about that rant that I said, it's your standard of how you want people to see you because these pictures and these video and this, all this stuff is going to be around forever. Yeah. Because you post you can't it. can't take that off the internet. You can't take it off the internet. You could delete it off. You could delete your stuff, but somebody saved it. That, that mean people, that doesn't mean people didn't screenshot it and add it to another site. Exactly. So the, the, the reality is, is that, you know, it, it, it's all about how you want your persona and how you want yeah, to present it. yourself. So, um, do you want to, uh, plug your your podcast you have i you know not, uh, not yet not yet okay well no we're just promoting yours right now All mine right. is just local it's like a local wake up 916 that helps promote things um that's going on in sacramento but i do have a podcast too okay. so is there any other questions people might have any more questions we have like 22 people watching i'm impressed either you like hearing our voices or you like looking at rick's face I don't think they want to see me. They go on here thinking that you're going to be in, in, in the video live. When is our next show? Let's, I think we were talking about trying to hit up maybe LA, huh? Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to be in LA and then I'm going to be in Yuma. But uh, I think we're just going to wait because the next actual show that I know of that we're going to be able to go to is the Arizona Super Show. Because there's really nothing out there right now that I know of. So it'll be right. either a cruise or actually, or we're just going to shoot again. I think we were talking about doing, doing another photo shoot. Right. So we'll have Someone asked, options. could you, would you recommend your daughter to model? I have an 18 year old daughter and um, she, I mean, right now everybody's Instagram models. There are some photos that she posts that I don't feel comfortable with, but being that I do what I do, um, all I can do is educate her. Um, educator on it like about how guys react what you're putting yourself out there all i can do is educate her and prepare her for that world and if that's something she's interested in as a mom regardless of what she does or doesn't do i'll always support her support her and love her unconditionally because it's not like my children understand that i am i'm not who i present myself to be that's just um, that's just what sells, you know. That's what people are interested in, and that's what that's something that um, that I work really hard to do. Mm -hmm. But that's not who I am. Like if you meet me in person, I'm, I'm I, I always tell people I feel like I look better in person than I do in my pictures, and even my personality is better in person than it is on on social media. But 
I respect my kids. I respect women out there who are who are putting themselves on display like that. I, re- I respect everyone. I don't look at them by what they do. I look at them by who they are inside. You know, like that's who I am. That's the type of person I am. So yeah, I would I would respect my daughter if she did. I wouldn't care what she became. I would just love her for who she is, and uh, respect is mutual from them. Yeah, exactly. And 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 like I said, coming back to the the whole concept of why I bring the models on here is so you guys understand they're people. And if you have if you have any kind of respect for women, you understand that. But a lot of people have a misconception and a stereotype that what models are. They're not that. And some are though. I'm, like, I'm, well, some, I mean, some but people, not fit, all. but not all. And the reality is, is we can't think that everybody is the same. Not every model is a stripper. You know what I mean? Right. And and not every Instagram model is a model. My my, what I just told somebody this recently. I said, you know, you can get a girl that takes all kinds of pictures by herself. She can and everything and look wonderfully great on Instagram. You put her in front of a camera and she she's she she she's scared, nervous. They, 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 the pictures don't come out good because she's not comfortable. She's not right. comfortable. She's, not she's used to just being in she's the mirror. Confident. You know, you're used to just being in yeah. the mirror and taking a picture of themselves. And, and there's a difference between right. doing it like that and actually having people direct you and take pictures of you. And, and sometimes with, as a model, you have to understand that not all the photos that you like are what guys want to see. Some photos that you don't like about yourself is will be will get like what like a thousand something likes or on Instagram and you may not pr- particularly like that photo but guys like that photo. Yeah, exactly. Like for me, like for me, I I feel comfortable regardless of what I have on or what I don't. Um, I would love to take photos and thongs and and be less nude, but I feel like at the end of the day, being that I'm single, I still want to have something for my future husband to unpack, you know, to un, un, unreveal, you know, it's like, I don't want to give up all my goods. Mm-hmm. And I still want to respect my future husband, whoever that may be, you know, like I want to say something for him. Yeah. I think, I think, I think the same sentiment for most, most, some women that I do know that they like this thing they, they want to save it, save it for somebody they're with versus just putting it out there for everybody. Right, then, then based on some money or or just likes, like yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't do anything for the gram. That's for sure. The gram ain't giving the gram ain't paying my my rent. The gram ain't paying my bills. So yeah, exactly. I don't I don't do it for likes. Like if you look at my Instagram page, I don't have that many followers, and I'm cool with that. Like it's I don't do it for fame or popularity. This is just who I am. This is my personality. And if you like it, cool. If you don't, cool. Like it hurts me none. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, real quick, Mr. Lowrider, no, I don't think I'm going to go to Torres. I'm not. There's no way I'm going to Texas in July. It's going to be like 125 degrees. That's crazy. But maybe uh, next year after COVID, when it gets back on the regular schedules, I'll head out there. So So you got new merch now, too, huh? You got your coffee cup. You got shirts. You got skirts. Yeah, I got coffee cups. Oh, I also have the regular. When are you going to get white beaters? When are the guys going to get white beaters? Ah, uh, they only have we- I only have women's t- tank tops like that. No, the um uh, the the regular tank tops, everything out underneath this video and the Teespring, um, you can link to that. And there's tank tops, there's hoodies, there's t-shirts, there's masks, all that. And then I have a second store, it's completely different. There's different stuff on there, and that is on the website. And you go under the shop, and then there's stuff there too. So everything's print to order. I don't have any of this. Most of this stuff I do not have my hands on. It's all made when you're printing. Do you do you ship it yourself or it no, comes straight no, from no. the anything on the uh, everything that's online is shipped directly to the person that orders it. It doesn't even get mm-hmm. made until they pay for it. I don't have a warehouse full of merch. I have some stuff only because I order samples like this coffee mug I have here. This is a uh, you know to go mug, you know, and you know it's just standard just coffee. Because- just because you know how people based on your follower base feel like you have a company right outside of your house, you know. Like oh yeah, they think I have I have a warehouse full of stuff and I have everything but to make all this stuff what myself. What he does so it's have cheap. is a what he does have is a pot and a toaster and some fans and what else he has like a rooster <laughs> and yeah, that's coffee mugs. <laughs> So, yeah, that's about it right there. But, yeah, and then, I don't know. I'm going to try to get some hats done. Like I said, I found a box of these shirts in 3X, which is my size. But the 3X uh, baseball tees, I found a box of these. So, if you have, if you need a 3X. Other than that, uh, 
underneath this video, there is going to be a link to the web store on my website. And then also you'll be able to see uh, the other items on my Teespring. And all those things and are print to order. So we have some stuff. Gen and we have some local. shirts with and we have some shirts with Ruthie's pictures on it. So. Gen six local say maybe Ruthie can model your merch. That's that's pending right now. We're working on that. We are working on that. Yes. Oh, we'll see. Like I said, at the end of the day, these are all things I already know. And we're gonna um we're waiting for the big the big show in uh, Arizona Super Show because that's going to be a big thing. Also, from what I understand, yes, the show, some people are asking if that show is going to happen. From what I've seen posted, it is going to happen. The only difference is, is there may be, it may be all outdoor. They're not 100% approved yet to have the floor. So if you've been to there or you've seen that how it was inside the stadium, uh, they're not they don't know if they're going to be able to do the inside of the stadium it may be all outdoors but either way i think a lot of people are still going to go because everybody's missing these big shows so that's what i know about that and then also i just want to say before we end that i'm going to probably uh look into doing some kind of a uh, monthly um what was i saying it was just a, like a newsletter and it'll be free so and then I'm also looking for people that are interested in advertising with me. So please email me if you're interested. Um, yeah, and if you're a model, submit your photos to Rex. Yeah, exactly. D-rated photos, right? Yeah, please. <sighs> Let me see. All right. So I want to thank you for having me. And I want to thank our, what, 18 watching people for supporting yeah, us. Varies. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, this well, this video will continue to be on here so other people can watch it later. I know it's in the middle of the day, but it's a holiday, it's President's Day here, and I have the day off, so I was able to get I was able to get on and do this. So um, but for everybody that's gonna hear it and see it, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. It's been over an hour. I appreciate it, Thanks Ruthie. For supporting. I, really, I, re I appreciate you, Ruthie, for your time. Um you know, it's an honor for me to be able to even shoot with you legitimately. It's mm -hmm. I was a fan back in the day. And now that I do this, it, it, it was just great friend. to have the I, opportunity to friend. work. Yeah, I was a fan. I'm still friend. a fan. You'll continue being yeah. a friend. Stop. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Hinson, for your questions. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Gen6. Thank you, Pagnati. Thank you, everybody. Continue to support. By supporting, all you have to do is share the video, have people subscribe, and purchase merch. Exactly. Adios. Uh, with that being said, then right. I'll talk to you later, Ruthie. Thank you very much once again. You're and welcome. for everybody else. Bye, you guys. I'll see you guys later. All right.